there recently have been books published. Much of the conversation between Rick and Peter talks about the problems with uric acid. So I want to go into this. And again, let's start from the beginning and say this. Does eating fruit and honey raise your uric acid? If my labs, if the people that I've worked with, labs are any indication, if people that I've seen on Instagram who send me their labs, I don't give medical advice, is any indication, no, it will not. What about organ meats? Will those increase your uric acid? Not if you are insulin sensitive. The paradigm around uric acid is much too simple. I've done a whole podcast on gout and why organs, meat, and fruit do not cause gout if you are insulin sensitive. The problem is that people are eating organs, meat, and fruit, and they're insulin resistant, and that's a problem. But what made them insulin resistant were none of those things. It was processed sugars and seed oils. People often look to historical references of nobility or royalty saying, look, they had gout. This is a disease of the royalty. Well, as Rick points out, there's very good evidence that alcohol consumption was common along with fruit, but I don't think fruit was causing their gout. And to the alcohol, much sugar was added. So we cannot blame gout in any king of England on fruit when that person is also consuming alcohol, which we know that ethanol is metabolized much like fructose and goes straight to the liver. There's no breaks. There's no protective mechanisms like there are with fruit. And that sugar is added to that alcohol. Sugar has been around for a very long time, guys. So do not be fooled by those historical accounts either. So let's look at Paul Saladino, carnivore MD's uric acid and get a sense of where I have been in the past. It's about time for me to get new blood work, so I'll do a whole panel and repeat this, but I want to show you guys the full history. This one is from 2019, July of 2019. At this point, I was strictly carnivore, and you can see a couple of things from this blood work. My uric acid was 4.6 milligrams per deciliter. Units will be important later when we look at uric acid and oxidative stress. And I also want to point out that uh, my fasting insulin was three, my C-peptide was 1.0, and my vitamin E was very high. Um, you know, it's actually at the high end of normal. Sometimes people criticize a strictly carnivore diet, say there's not enough vitamin E. Well, I wasn't supplementing with vitamin E, and my vitamin E was very high. My coenzyme Q10 was off the charts, 2.38. My homocysteine was seven. My 25 hydroxy with vitamin D was 44. I was living in San Diego at the time, probably could have been better. But this is old blood work from more than a few years ago. You can see here my ferritin is 220. I don't worry about that because I don't have hemochromatosis. I don't have any evidence of oxidative stress connected with that. That's a whole separate podcast. My fasting glucose was 90 on a zero-carb diet, and my fructosamine was 234. So more recently, a little over a year ago, I had blood work done, and my uric acid was 3.9. What was different between the two of those things? For the second uric acid, which was lower, I had added fruit and honey. So <laughs> there are so many examples of this. It is really not the case that fruit and honey will cause uric acid to rise. And I'm eating lots of organs in both of those situations. Let's be very, very clear. And I've seen this over and over. So in many of the recent books that have been published or the recent book that's been published about uric acid, the recommendations are to limit organ meats. This is the worst idea ever. <laughs> You will become nutrient deficient and you're losing, you're missing out on a very, very critical nutrient source. That's why I built Heart and Soil because a lot of you guys won't eat fresh raw organs. So you can check us out, heartandsoil.co. If you need desiccated organs, we make the best ones on the planet, grass-fed, grass-finished, regeneratively raised, et cetera, et cetera. If you can get raw organs, freaking fist bump to you, amazing, do that and thrive. Do not worry about your uric acid. You can do this experiment yourself. Go test your uric acid. And you'll see that when you're insulin sensitive, your uric acid will not rise. It is not as simple as organs and meat cause your uric acid to rise. In the setting of insulin resistance, perhaps purine, in the setting of insulin resistance, perhaps purine metabolism is disordered. Now, where does uric acid come from? If you decrease purine consumption in an adult male, you can decrease uric acid about 35%. Now, this is presumably a male that's somewhat insulin resistant because I don't think that you could decrease my uric acid much, or if you could, I don't know that I would want to decrease my uric acid much. It's already at the low end of normal. But that would suggest that 60 to 70% of uric acid is made endogenously from the breakdown of purines from DNA, et cetera. So maybe a third comes from our diet. But I don't think that, and there's good evidence for this in the gout podcast that I've already done, I show it, there's good evidence that if you increase the amount of meat and organs, the body can auto-regulate the amount of uric acid and it will not rise. 
But I think that in the setting of insulin resistance, kidney mechanisms for this get impaired. And this is, again, the problem, that people conflate these things massively. So why all this hell about uric acid? Well, there's reasonable evidence that in, in individuals, in humans, and in cell culture models, and in animal models, high levels of uric acid are problematic for humans. But not levels of uric acid like I have, 3.9, 4.6, levels of 7, 6, even 8, 9, 10, those levels become problematic. At levels that are physiologic, I don't think uric acid is a horrible thing. And I definitely, as I said, I will repeat this one more time, uric acid will not be increased by eating organs and meat if you are metabolically healthy. You know how to get there because you listen to this podcast. In the nutrition space now, there are assertions that uric acid causes reactive oxygen species to increase in mitochondria, oxidative stress to increase in mitochondria. But those are not often, in my opinion, adequately framed in terms of how much uric acid we're talking about. So this is a cell culture study looking at hepatocytes, and they looked at different levels of uric acid to see how much oxidative stress they could cause for DNA damage. And what you find here is they're going from 0, 5, 10, 20, and 30. Really, the significant differences happened beyond 10 milligrams per deciliter, where remember, my uric acid is 3.9 milligrams per deciliter. It's not even physiologic. I don't think many humans could achieve 10. Now, 10 is achievable by some in massive levels of uric acid in the human body, in the blood, but or in the urine, which would be hyperuricemia. But the majority of people are not going to get uric acid to 10 unless you're really, really insulin resistant. I don't know if there's ever been a documented case of somebody having uric acid of 30 milligrams per deciliter, but that's what they say in the study, that if you increase uric acid to 30 milligrams per deciliter, you see massive reactive oxygen species. Okay, that's fine, but I don't think that's really a physiologic dose of this compound. And it's certainly not a level of uric acid that humans are going to achieve eating an animal-based diet. There are some who increasingly believe that the loss of the uricase mutation in humans, which is an enzyme that breaks down uric acid, was connected with our propensity to develop body fat and survival. I'm not completely convinced by this theory for a number of reasons. If you want to generate more uric acid in the human body, not only do you have to lose the uricase mutation, you have to have many changes in the kidney physiology to retain the uric acid because we're not peeing it out. So you have to reabsorb it, which is something that humans actively do. So the other side of this equation is that uric acid may have many beneficial roles in the human body when someone is not insulin resistant. Imagine that. We've seen this many times, like LDL cholesterol, for instance, which gets demonized again and again. I can't help but think that uric acid is just LDL all over again. It's nutritional reductionism, it's missing context, and it's blaming the firemen when there was actually a different arsonist. I don't think uric acid is causing a lot of these problems. Perhaps it is when it gets massively elevated, but I don't think it's the uric acid itself that's causing the uric acid to get elevated. I think it's something else, the insulin resistance is driving that. And I don't think that it's a direct correlation between meat and purines and organs and purines in the human diet or fructose from fruit in the human diet and this is what I'm driving at. But I don't think those things are raising uric acid, and it's just nutritional reductionism all over again. There are actually some pretty darn interesting studies that suggest that uric acid might be beneficial in many ways. There's a study that I've referenced many times in the past that looks at both uric acid and glutathione levels in cold water swimmers. And this one is very interesting because both uric acid and glutathione levels drop during short-term whole body cold exposure. So I have used this study to suggest that the human body, as we know, has many mechanisms which are endogenous for making antioxidants. Glutathione is by far the largest antioxidant. But I think that contrary to those who would poo-poo this notion, yes, I said poo-poo um, or doo-doo, there, there's a good amount of evidence that uric acid in, physio, in, in healthy human physiology could actually be acting as a, an antioxidant. And I think that's very interesting. So you see that glutathione levels will decrease, both oxidized and reduced, uh, with acute cold exposure, and then they go up the next day. And so that's quite interesting that um, glutathione is being consumed, which is the fact that cold exposure causes oxidative stress, heat exposure causes oxidative stress, your body's going to consume glutathione, and uric acid goes down and then bumps up the next day. So where's the uric acid going? So there's a lot of good hypotheses around the idea that uric acid can elevate in conditions that are going to cause more oxidative stress. 
And that may be the reason that uric acid is going up in things like alcohol or other exposures that are going to increase reactive oxygen species. Perhaps it's actually a beneficial thing in some ways. Again, think about the context, think about the overall metabolic health, but uric acid is decreasing, uh, but there's a decreased level of uric acid in individuals when they're exposed to cold water. So again, this is quite fascinating. Could both uric acid and glutathione be antioxidant mechanisms, be mechanisms by which the body is managing reactive oxygen species, which occur in things like cold and hot? All of this to the point that maybe uric acid isn't completely bad. 